Hello everyone, welcome to EPG Pachala. I am Dr. Veda Krishnan. I am a scientist in the Division of Biochemistry, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, IERA, New Delhi, India. I am going to talk about a very relevant topic today, that is purification of enzyme from the paper Protein Biochemistry and Enzymology. In today's lecture, we will focus on understanding the preliminary basics of protein purification. This will cover understanding of the basic schemes and step that generally drive in any protein purification procedure. We will also study in detail about the first major step in purification which is protein concentration. To start, this concept map shows the outline of today's lecture. In this module, we will first briefly understand why and where purified protein or enzyme are needed. Along with this, we will try to gain a broad understanding of what are the major must have for any purification and also briefly on the basic schemes and strategies that should be followed for any purification. Towards the end of this lecture, we will study various methods of protein purification like salting out, ultrafiltration as well as nucleic acid removal which prepares or concentrate the yield of a sample prior loading into any purification column. Protein purification is an essential component for the characterization of protein property, structure, function and related interaction. For example, conformational alterations, substrate specificities, specific activity as well as interaction with other ligands. The study of protein and their function is imperative from the perspective of understanding both cell and organism. The importance of protein is emphasized by their role as biocatalyst for cellular metabolic processes. As integral cellular structural component both within and outside the cell, as cellular receptors for conveying relevant and necessary information to the cell, as intracellular signaling components or as component of genetic machinery of the cell. Thus, it is often reasonable to purify an isolated protein so that one is able to study the protein in isolation. Additionally, purified protein also find application in various areas as shown in this figure. The degree of protein purity required depends to a great extent on the intended end use of the protein. For example, as an enzyme additive in a washing powder, a relatively impure enzyme sample is sufficient. However, for application in a pharmaceutical industry, high level of protein purity is mandatory. The two important essentiality of protein purification are sources and assays. Sources are one of the key essentiality of protein purification that there must exist a reasonable source from which the protein could be derived. The source should be both cheap and readily available. As we said, the second essentiality are assays. An assay is essential for quantitative determination of a particular activity present in the protein within the fraction. Assays can be diverse, ranging from colorimetric assay or a change in molecular weight of a protein or ability to stimulate cell differentiation, cell proliferation or cell death. Since an assay is required to be repeated many times, it is essential that the assay procedure should be simple and not much time consuming. The first step in purifying protein is the preparation of a crude extract. As you can see in the scheme of protein purification, crude preparation may be obtained by simply removing the cells by centrifugation or by cell lysis. The soluble protein containing fraction extracellular or intracellular is concentrated to obtain an enriched protein fraction. The crude fractions of a protein can be achieved by adding various type of precipitants such as ammonium sulphate or organic solvents. The partially pure fraction may then be subjected to one or more purification strategies until purification is achieved. 
In the next few slides, we will look at various purification strategies and steps involved. Each protein purification step usually leads to bring about some fold of purification in the desired protein, while at the same time induces some degree of product loss. An ideal protein purification strategy is one in which the highest level of purification is achieved in the fewest step such that the product loss is simultaneously minimized. The selection of step in protein purification protocol depend on size, charge, solubility and other properties of the target protein. Now let's discuss on purification strategies. For simple planning and execution of protein purification protocol, within timely and cost effective manner, a three step protein purification strategy has been developed. This is known as CIPP strategy. CIPP is an abbreviation for capture, intermediate purification and polishing. Have a look into this illustration. The capture phase involves isolation, concentration and stabilization of the target protein. In the intermediate purification phase, bulk impurities like unwanted protein, nucleic acid, endotoxins are removed and in the polishing phase any trace amount of the impurities are finally removed. Although this strategy consists of three broad phases, it does not imply that every purification process contain three steps. Each phase may include one or more purification step. It should however be kept in mind that increasing the number of purification step will decrease the overall protein recovery, increase purification time and lead to reduced activity. Purification is a multi-step procedure as mentioned in this block diagram. The soluble fraction containing the target protein is concentrated by precipitation with salt, following which it is subjected to fractionation by passing them through chromatographic column for further purification. This could include binding to ionic column in case of ion exchange chromatography, binding to affinity column in case of affinity chromatography, separation by size column in gel filtration chromatography, separation based on hydrophobic interaction of protein and column metrics in hydrophobic interaction chromatography, fractionation by isoelectric focusing or any other method available. The fractionation serve two purposes that is removal of contaminating material and enrichment of the fraction containing the activity of interest. Once fractionation is accomplished, the fractions are assayed for activity to detect the activity of interest in the particular fraction compared to others. The fraction containing target protein are then analyzed for purity using methods like SDS page. If not completely pure, this enriched fraction is then again subjected to another round of fractionation and the process can be repeated till purification is achieved. Is there a need to concentrate? Yes, of course. Concentration of the soluble fraction containing desired protein to be purified can be achieved through precipitation and ultrafiltration. Precipitation is a commonly applied technique for concentration of protein present in an extract. The following method of purification are usually employed. First one is salting out with ammonium sulphate or you can do selective precipitation with an organic solvent. In order to understand how precipitation occurs by ammonium sulphate, we need to briefly understand what is salting out. Salting out is an effective mean for purification which explore the reduced solubility of protein present in a solution of very high ionic strength causing certain protein to precipitate. The figure here shows salting in and salting out processes. Each protein molecule in solution is uniformly layered by an essential layer of hydration by water molecule 
which enable the molecule to repel each other and stay in solution. As more and more salt is added to the protein, the solubility of the salt added gradually tend to become higher than the protein. Owing to the increased affinity of salt molecules for water over protein molecules, the hydration shell around the protein molecule is thus gradually displaced by the increasing ionic concentration in the solvent. In other words, the protein molecules are thus stripped off their hydration layer allowing hydrophobic interaction between proteins. It is an interaction between hydrophobic patches on the protein surface to predominate which lead to aggregation of the protein molecule and precipitation. It is important to note that salting out occur at high salt concentration. The use of salt at a very high concentration also cause a further increase in surface tension inducing the protein to aggregate resulting in salt precipitation. Precipitation of protein by salt does not usually lead a highly purified protein, but it can assist in the removal of some unwanted bulk protein in the mixture and also in concentrating the sample. Ammonium sulphate is convenient and effective because it is highly soluble, cheap, less toxic and stabilize most protein and enzyme. Fractionation of protein mixture by the stepwise increase in the ionic strength of the salt being used for protein precipitation can prove to be an effective strategy of obtaining partially purified enzyme. The effectiveness of different ion towards protein precipitation was first established by Franz Hofmeister in 1888 and the ordering of cation and anion are arranged in the order of their effectiveness is called Hofmeister series. You can see the series of cation and anion in this slide. Between cations and anion, the anions have the greatest effect on protein precipitation. The starting molecule decreasing solubility of the non-polar molecule and strengthen hydrophobic interaction thus salting out of the system. Contrarily, the latter molecule tend to form strong ionic interaction with the protein that disrupt hydrogen bonding thus contributing to the denaturation of the protein. Sometime polar organic solvents such as methanol, ethanol, propanol and acetone are used for precipitating some enzymes or proteins. The mechanism precipitation is almost similar to that of salting out as explained earlier. Use of solvents such as ethanol or methanol which are miscible in nature to a solution may cause protein to precipitate. This is because the organic solvent molecule gradually displaces water from the protein surface thus reducing the solvation layer around the protein and binding the water molecule so displaced as hydration layer around the organic solvent molecule. The protein molecules with reduced or no hydration layer thus tend to aggregate due to predominating protein-protein hydrophobic interaction as well as electrostatic forces. Miscible organic solvent also act by reducing the dielectric of the medium and consequently reducing the solubility of protein leading them to precipitate out of the solution. After precipitating the protein fraction using the already discussed approaches and redissolving it in a suitable buffer, it is essential to remove the ammonium sulphate from the protein sample before subjecting to subsequent steps during purification. One of the most widely used method to achieve this is to dialyze the solution. Dialysis separate protein from other molecules such as salt by using a semi-permeable membrane which is mostly a cellulose membrane with micropores. Therefore, Protein molecules having dimension significantly greater than the pore diameter are retained inside the dialysis bag. In this figure shows a typical protein dialysis setup. The protein or enzyme solution is placed in a dialysis bag and immersed in a large volume of buffer that is stirred and maintained at about 4 degrees Celsius. If the buffer is changed several times, 
allowing several hours each time for the salt molecule to move out of the dialysis bag and equilibrate each time more or less all of it will be removed from the protein solution. Dialysis will increase the volume of the enzyme solution because water molecules from the buffer may tend to move into the bag due to osmotic effect. Thus it is necessary to leave an air gap at the top of the membrane tube to prevent its bursting. Another method for protein concentration is ultrafiltration whereby water and low molecular weight materials are removed by passage through a membrane under pressure where enzyme being retained. Ultrafiltration then efficiently result concentration with little loss of enzyme activity. Ultrafiltration differs from conventional filtration and microfiltration with respect to the size of the particles being retained. As you can see in this figure, stirred cell represent the simplest configuration of ultrafiltration cell. The membrane rests on a rigid support at the base of a cylindrical vessel which is equipped with a magnetic stirrer. It is suitable for preliminary studies and for the concentration of laboratory column elevates. In case of intracellular enzyme obtained after cell lysis, the preparation often contains nucleic acid which can give rise to increased viscosity interfering with enzyme purification procedure. Thus it is essential to remove such nucleic acid before proceeding to the next purification steps. Some organism contain sufficient nuclease activity to eliminate this problem but otherwise the nucleic acid must be removed by precipitation or degraded by the addition of exogenous nucleases before proceeding to the next stage of purification. Positively charged materials like polyethylenamine, cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide a cationic detergent streptomycin sulfate and protamine sulfate which form complexes with the negatively charged phosphate residue of the nucleic acid are used as precipitating agent for the removal of nucleic acid. The nucleic acid complexes with these compound and precipitate can be removed by centrifugation. However, all the above precipitants are expensive and sometimes toxic. Treatment with the bovine pancreatic nuclease is another cost effective and a safer alternative for nucleic acid removal. To summarize, protein purification is a multi-step procedure comprising several steps starting from crude extract to the purified protein. The SIP strategy which we already discussed for purification enable simple planning and execution of the purification protocol and in a very cost effective way. The crude protein can be concentrated using salting out by ammonium sulfate precipitation or solvent precipitation or ultrafiltration before proceeding to further chromatographic steps. Dialysis of salt precipitated by ammonium sulfite or solvent is also very essential. Nucleic acid removal is an additional crucial step for intracellular enzyme extract before purification. So, in this lecture we have learned about the basic strategies that drive protein purification procedure. We have understood why and where the purified proteins or enzymes are needed and looked at what are the major must haves for any purification. The basic strategies and scheme that is followed for any purification has also been discussed. Towards the end of this lecture, various methods of protein precipitation have also been studied. Thank you.